Sister Elizabeth Kreiner, A.K. Kreiner. Kreiner. Definitely. Oh, what's the difference between Kreiner and Kreiner? Well, both my mother and dad's families came from Alsace Lorraine. The difference was that they came from the French side of Alsace Lorraine. And on the French side, that name is pronounced Kreiner. Kreiner. Oh. So I'm a Kreiner. Yes. <laughs> and you, you embrace the French part of your life, don't you? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. I used to call myself German French, but now I correct that and say French German. And where was this French German baby born by the name of, what was, what was your? Uh, Elizabeth Mildred. Did they call you Liz early on? Did they call me? Liz. Then? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, that would... I had a neighbor. There were two women in that, uh, two children, but they were adults and they were at, uh, much older than I. And one of them was Mildred. And I think my mother called me after Mildred. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> but you lost that name pretty soon, didn't you? I did, yes. 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 Tell me about, um, did you go to a Dominican school in your hometown? In my hometown, which was a crossroads, period. That's all there was to it. Where, what state? In, in Michigan, Michigan, in Burnside, Michigan. That's 60 miles north of Detroit on M53. <laughs> so no Catholic school there? No Catholic school. So, but you came from a Catholic family. I did, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we, we were... Uh, Well, let me see. How can I make this interesting? <laughs> well, why don't you start with your pastor? <laughs> My pastor? Yes. <laughs> we had a wonderful pastor. In fact, he's buried in our cemetery here. What, what is his name, Liz? McGinnis. Arthur McGinnis. Arthur McGinnis was uh, in the... Uh, in the east, he was a missionary, and he got the uh, the the fever, and he was never able to go back to China. And so, um, our bishop Gallagher uh, adopted him and assigned him to our our church which was a little country church. In fact, the, the two churches together uh, made up one parish here, North Branch Sacred Heart and St. Mary's Burnside. Mm -hmm. um, isn't Vianne Baez from that area? Sister Vianne Baez. Oh, yeah, she was from North, uh, from North, North Branch. Branch. Yeah. which is only another five or six miles mm -hmm. from where I lived. Yeah. So did you have this priest for um, catechism? I did. I did. Actually, uh, we had catechism classes. I can't remember if it was like every Sunday uh, or exactly when, but uh, there were four classes. One group, the youngest group, was in this corner, and the next in that corner, and then another one in there, then Father McGinnis's group. I was always having my ear, ear there to hear, because I loved to hear him talk to those older kids. Well, and if he was Irish, did he have any connection with Mother Gerald? Not before he came there, but uh, he certainly was instrumental in getting a whole group of us to go to Adrian. 
In fact, at one time, there were six of us in the convent. Now, on the map, it names Burnside as a population of 36. <laughs> <laughs> so when you think 18. of uh, six <laughs> of us out of 36, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's earned his place in heaven, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So did he bring you here? Is that the story? Well, he, he was... Uh, instrumental in getting Sister Marie Elizabeth Doherty, my sister Mary, who at the time was uh, Sister William Cecile, and myself, and the three Schutz girls, oh, yeah. Jane Edward, Anthony, and uh, Jane Treese. Treese, mm -hmm. right. Eventually, the three of them did not pursue uh, continue as sisters, uh, but the Mary Elizabeth did, and uh, I did. So, so your sister was already in Adrian when you entered. Yeah. She was. Mm -hmm. She, in fact, uh, uh, is instrumental in my being here. I've always given her credit. You know how they said one of the older nuns is 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 your sponsor or something. Well, then she's mine because um, I remember saying, uh, Mother Gerald was there, and Mother Gerald was talking to a group of us, and uh, Mother Gerald said, Now, where are all these young women who should be here? And... Uh, Somebody piped up and said, well, this is a whole group of us right here, you know. And uh, so, actually, Father McGinnis was kind of the connecting rod for all of us. He, he loved the youth. He loved the teenagers. And uh, he, got, he got them all together. And all of these young boys and maybe a few girls came down to Adrian from home to see us when we were novices. Uh, and then he brought ice cream for all of us. Well, no wonder he, he's gotten a place of burial in, yeah. in our cemetery. We thought he was great for that. Mm -hmm. What was your postulancy like, Liz? Uh, my postulancy? Well, um, I'm going to be very honest. It was rough. Mm -hmm. My postulancy was rough because uh, I don't know what I did, but I did something that must have been awful because my postulant mistress said, You've, uh, the devil's got you. You whipped around his tail. Well, I thought, oh my God, you know, this was horrible. And may I ask this, the passionate mistress's name? Are you going to reveal that? <clears throat> sure. Because everybody knows Sister Florine. Florine, yeah. Mary Philip was our novice mistress. And Florine was our fashion industry. And you you took the name Catherine William after after whom? Actually, not by my choice. It was be after my dad and mother, because my mother was Cecilia Catherine. Uh, she was Cecilia, and my uh, dad was William. And so. We were allowed three names to put down for what we wanted to get. Mm -hmm. Well, they took those, uh, looked at those three names, and they had the audacity not to let me have any one of my three. <laughs> I did not like that a bit. 
uh, they uh, gave my sister's three names to her and to me. She became William Cecile, my dad, William, and Cecilia, mm -hmm. and I became Catherine William. My choice was Paulette, after my brother Paul, but I didn't get that. I, didn't. <laughs> I, I never appreciated that. You never liked Catherine William. Oh, you grew to like it, I bet. Oh, sure. Yes, yes. Uh, you, did, you, you, you take what you get. Now, you've mentioned Paul and you've mentioned your sister Mary. Were there any other siblings? Oh, just a few. <laughs> I have seven brothers and five sisters. Oh, my heaven. Seven and that's right, five sisters. That made 13 of us. We were what they call the baker's dozen <laughs> because we were 13. And how many of you are on this earth t today? Yeah. You. Only I. Uh, and, and you weren't the youngest, were you? No. No. I was in the middle of the, of the group. Of the clan. Holding up the fort. <laughs> May I ask your age now? Now? No. You can ask. <laughs> And I'll tell you, actually, I'm 94. 94. What does that feel like, Liz? 94. <laughs> Did you have a book to tell you what 94 was going to feel like? Did I have what? Did you have a book that told you what 94 was going to feel like? No. <laughs> uh, I still didn't get the question. I didn't put my hearing aids in this morning. Oh, that's what okay. What was your question? Uh, we'll, we'll move on, okay? I'd like to know what, where you were first missioned. My first mission was Queen of Angels in Chicago. And my sister, William Cecile, and I were both assigned to Queen of Angels. So I was with my sister for six more years. And then she left the convent. She went home. And uh, uh, so, excuse me. And that's just to indicate that I had a very good breakfast. <laughs> As you always do, I'm sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, did you stay long at Queen of Angels? Five years. And at the end of that time, we would have made final profession. Uh, she was not going to make profession. She was going to leave the convent the day that I made final profession. And uh, uh, that, that was okay with me because she did not have a vocation and I knew it. Mm, beautiful. She, at home, she was the life of the party. She was the belle of the ball, so to speak, you know. And uh, uh, very vivacious, black, snappy, snappy eyes and black, wavy hair. And... Uh, Did you miss her when she left? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She. Uh, she. She was a, a wonderful woman. Still is. She. Uh, I. The reason I knew that she didn't have a vocation was that at home she was this vivacious young woman in the convent. She was very quiet. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's not Mary. Mm -hmm. that, and so I knew that it wasn't right for her to be there. You know. Well, as a matter of fact, she was there 
due to the bad advice of a priest. Uh, she apparently was being pursued by two young fellows, and uh, they wanted to get married and get married now. And she told Father McGinnis, I don't want to get married now. But all he heard was, I don't want to get married. Mm. So he said, why don't you enter the convent? I thought, that's a dumb thing yeah. <laughs> to suggest, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, that was an alternative. <laughs> yeah, right. It, I have this impression that you spent many years in Chicago. Is that correct? I what? That you spent many of your um, apostolic ministerial years in Chicago. Actually, that's true. I lived in and around Chicago most of my religious life. I was at Queen of Angels. I was at St. Celestine's in Elmwood Park. That's just west of Chicago. Of Chicago. Um, for seven years, and uh, I was at St. Claremont of Falco two or three years, and uh, then I was in Joliet for a long time. Which was your favorite mission? Oh, that's hard to tell, because I tend to uh, take the best of anything. Now, of, of all those places you were living and um, teaching, I presume, right? Yeah. Um, was there one or two of our women that inspired you or helped you along the way or mentored you along the way? Actually, at Queen of Angels, that was an eighth-grade school, and there were two classes of every grade. And so we had a lot of sisters there. And uh, and uh, the older sisters tended to be teaching the upper grades. Um, and uh, Did you have a teaching partner? Yeah. Uh-huh. Sister Anala. Oh, my. Yes. Anala was my teaching partner. She was teaching third grade, and I was teaching third grade. So she was my teaching partner. And, uh, Liz, during that time in our convent living, um, I presume you did, like I did, had the horarium to follow each day, besides our teaching. Can you, do you remember what that schedule was or how it flowed during the day? Did, what time did we get up in the morning? Uh, 5.20. Yeah, we got... Uh, Sister Carmelita Marks was our superior. She's a wonderful woman. Uh, a very uh, upright, you know. And um, she... Uh, believed in following the Ferrarian of the novitiate. <laughs> so we got up at the time that the novices would have gotten up, and they did, you know. Uh, but I didn't object to that. It was, uh, and then once you were up, you had, what, about 20 minutes to get dressed and make yeah, your bed? Right, be in chapel, have made the vania. And uh, had uh, oral office and meditation, right? Right. And then eight. That's right. And then school. That's right. And then home for lunch and midday prayer. Well, if I went home at lunchtime, I might have to do playground duty, which means that I would have 20 minutes to get home and eat and get out and be on the playground. So uh, one could say that they kept us busy. <laughs> Was there time for private prayer? Yes. Uh -huh. 
-hmm. Probably at night in your own room. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. I can remember one time. I forget what what happened, but something happened that I had to be soaking my foot. And uh, n normally the we didn't go to each other's rooms or so. Uh, but uh, three or four of them came because they knew I was sitting with my foot in this bucket of water. And uh, uh, the idea was to find out what was going on with me, you know. <laughs> and uh, let's see, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah. That's, that's okay. I know it's some. I have always um, had the impression that you were deeply committed to the ministry of peace and justice. That was later. Those first years of my life, when I was teaching, you know, and so on. Um, I was in the primary grades. And I love teaching the little ones. They were so dear. Um, and then, uh, eventually, I think, uh, you remember the School of Americas? That um, so is. Mm -hmm. I was looking at some of my pictures just a couple of days ago, and, and I was standing there with a young man on the other end of this huge sign. And the sign said, SOA, close the SOA, because we were down there in Georgia. And that was the beginning of my uh, uh, expression of peace and justice. Some may not know what the SOA, School of the Americas, and what was going on there. The School of the Americas was training uh, young people. Uh, and I can't, you know, considering my age, you can, o you can overlook that. Yes. Uh, because how could you remember that long? <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do when you got uh, back? Uh, to Chicago, how did you, what did you do to give expression to this desire for? Well, I remember that when I was in the junior high grades, I was uh, the diocesan uh, teacher or supervisor. Super, no, not mm -hmm. supervisor in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was, we, we, we organized ourselves into the junior high teachers mm -hmm. and elected officers. And I was elected as president of the Junior High Teachers Association. Um, and uh, I can't remember mm -hmm. all those details. I should have looked up my... Well, no, no, but did you focus as a group of junior high teachers on teaching peace and justice? No, no, no. Christian service? Pardon? Doing, children doing Christian service? I'm sorry. Re reaching out to the community. Oh, reaching out to the community. I remember when the lay people began to, uh, the church was inviting the lay people to be more involved and so on. And so I met regularly every uh, week or every two weeks, I think every week, with a, 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 a group of lay people, couples. They'd get together, we'd pray, we would talk, 
and we would socialize. And I considered my involvement with the lay people uh, as very precious. Uh, they were such wonderful people. And uh, I suspect this was as a result of Vatican II. Yes. Uh -huh. You, you took easily to Vatican II, I presume. I what? That you adapted to the changes from Vatican II easily. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. And I would uh, go on Sundays uh, to be with the uh, people that uh, were... Uh, getting together uh, to share more deeply their own spiritual journeys, like a husband and wife marriage encounter. And uh, uh, Sister Roselle Schaefer was a Franciscan, Wheaton Franciscan, dear friend of mine. And we were in this group of, of lay people who got together on a regular basis. So theirs was uh, sharing, yes, and beautiful. ours was sister. Not, what did I say? They, like a facilitator? Uh, no. What was your role with the people? My role yes. was, I was just a part of them. You're all beautiful. And that she, Roselle and I were one pair, and all the others were a pair, husband and wife, you know. And so I, I treasured that so much. Those people were so special in my life. That must have been the beginning of the marriage encounter movement. It was. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh -huh. Liz, what, what has life been for you here at Maria? What is? How has life been for you here at Maria? It has been horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you lie beautifully. <laughs> well, I look around and think, could be in such a wonderful place and surrounded by so many wonderful people. Liturgies available all the time. And so, I mean, life here at Maria or at Regina when I lived in Regina, uh, either way, has been wonderful. I couldn't wish it to be any better. God bless you. And thank you for this beautiful interview. Thank you. Yes.